Hey there, this is Mike and you're listening to Feeling Twisty. I'm really glad you're here. Way back in one of my early podcasts, uh, somewhere around episode number 30 or 31, the title of it, that episode is Art and a Cup of Grapes. I told you the story of a little boy who got grapes because he loves grapes. And check out that episode if you haven't heard it. I do want to correct myself before you listen to it. In that episode, I referred to the woman who shared the story with me as the boy's mother. She's really his godmother. And you've heard from this woman before, Amanda. I've shared a few of her stories over the last year or so. Now, she watches this boy, her godson, on the weekends while his mother works. And she's been doing that since he was an infant. So we just bought a new house and we're moving. So we're at the old house and we're loading up the trailer. I have the trailer behind the Jeep. Roger's got a truckload of stuff. And so Roger pulls out in front of us and we pull behind him. And Nixon, all of a sudden from the back seat, I hear Nixon, oh man. I said, what? He said, Roger's in front of us. He said, I wanted to win. I said, well, baby, I said, he didn't even know we were in a race. So it doesn't matter. You know, he said, no, he said, but he's going to get to the house before us. He's going to beat us. I wanted to win. And I was like, well, you know, he didn't even know we were racing. So, and so next thing you know, not even two minutes later after that, Roger calls, hey, I'm going to pull off. I'm going to let you get in front of me so I can follow you behind, uh, so I can follow behind the trailer. So guess who wins? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I enjoy hearing stories about that little boy. Amanda sent me a video of him describing to her how he imagines what he wants. He's so cute when he describes it. He says, he closes his eyes and sees it in his head and he feels it. And he he touches his chest when he says that. And he opens his eyes fully expecting it to be done. Now, as you listen to that little story that Amanda shared, you might have thought, well, he's just a kid. It wasn't like it was anything really important. Well, that kind of thinking is like the disciples in the Bible. In Luke chapter 8, the disciples tried to keep the children away from Jesus. Go away, kid. You're bothering me. (laughs) Jesus stops everything and he says, hold on, guys. Bring the kids to me. And in Luke 18, verse 17, he says, truly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And in Matthew 18, 3, he says, Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Now that word change means to turn completely around, to twist around, (laughs) feeling twisty. Jesus talks about the importance of changing in another verse. In Mark 1.15, he says, The kingdom of God has become near. Repent and believe the good news. Repent means to think differently, to change the way you think. Change your idea of the kingdom. It's not out there somewhere. It's already within us as our I amness. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's the only way to the kingdom. So in that verse in Mark, he's telling us to change our mind about things. They aren't what we've always been taught they were. And in Luke 17, 21, he tells us that the kingdom isn't some other realm or place that we all go to someday. He says the kingdom is within each one of us already. So how do we find this kingdom, this heaven within us? we get twisty. (laughs) We change our way of thinking and become like we were as children, full of ideas, dreams, fully engaging our imagination for the sheer joy of it. Amanda's godson is a wonderful example of what Jesus is talking about here. There is no desire too silly or childish or too small or too big for that matter. In that early episode, Art and a Cup of Grapes, it was 
his love of grapes that brought him his grapes that day. And in today's story, he wanted to get ahead of Roger, Amanda's partner. There wasn't any noble or altruistic reason for it. He just wanted it. And his desire was fulfilled minutes later. Now, that's the way I see those Bible verses. To know God as our awareness of being, we do as we did as kids. We let loose our imagination and play like children, refusing to accept anything that contradicts what we're imagining. In my college psychology class, we learned about the theory of mind and the stages of child development. I was taught that the way that children thought egocentrically was a thing to get rid of, to stamp out as we matured. Egocentrism basically means the inability to differentiate the self and other. And it's also described as having difficulty distinguishing between subjective and objective. That kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it? There is no other. There is only self. And Neville describes prayer as the subjective appropriation of an objective hope. What we can feel as real will be experienced objectively. As children, we're closer to that truth than we are as adults. Our subjective world is just as real as our objective. We have no problem as children subjectively appropriating our objective hopes, even if we don't realize what we're doing. That type of nonsense gets hammered out as we get older. Time to start planning for the future. Time to start limiting ourselves. Here's a list of careers. Pick the one that best suits your aptitude. <laughs> I know my high school guidance counselor meant well, but they really had no business telling me what was possible or impossible for me. Come on. Can you believe we do that? We look at all these rules in life. Here's what you're smart enough for. Your test results show that you can, well, you can change oil for a living. Or maybe you can be a pilot. We let others tell us what we can and cannot be, and we buy it. We accept that. And then we have to get into hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt to get a degree for a career that we didn't want in the first place, but it was the one on the list that the counselor or our parents said we should take. Come on. <laughs> We're taught to use reason, to be rational. Here's how the world really works, Mike. Get your head out of the clouds and give up those silly dreams. Now, my parents never told me that, by the way. My parents were always supportive. Like my dad told me one day when I wanted to change majors from accounting to theater, he told me, he said, Mike, you can be whatever you want in life. You can be a doctor, a lawyer, a ditch digger, or even an actor. <laughs> they were always very supportive. But as adults, we can't help but try to teach the children, you know, give them advice and we inadvertently give them limits. We place limits on children. We buy all of these silly limits based on what the world thinks, you know? I'm sure there are a number of ways to interpret those verses that I've used in this episode, but I really like the way I did it. <laughs> the kingdom of God, or heaven, is our imagination. And the way to access the wonders of our imagination is to completely twist around, change, and become like we were as children. To dive in head first and have fun with it. As we grow up, we're taught to follow tradition, the traditions of our culture, of our family, our religion. And we're told that these are the rules of life and we're expected to follow them because our parents did it, and their parents did it, and our society says this is the way it should be because commercials say this is the life we're supposed to have or the news media says this is the way we're supposed to live our life. As children, we made up our own rules, and we changed those rules whenever they no longer suited us, and we went about playing a different game, on to the next adventure. By the time we were adults, we got so caught up in the facts of the world 
that we forgot our innate ability to imagine something different for ourselves. We think of our dreams of our childhood as silly and naive. When I was a child, and I wouldn't have been able to articulate it this way, but I woke up every day with the intention to experience things. It was all about what I wanted to experience. And regardless of what it was, it always involved fun. But then we grow up. And for many years as an adult, I, I woke up every morning and without that sense of excitement and wonder, it had a bit of dread in it. A little, oh, I just want to stay in bed. <laughs> I had no idea that I was shaping my days in those moments. I love the story that Neville shares in the lecture, Our Real Beliefs. A woman named Jan told the story to Neville. Jan was a young boy's babysitter or nanny. And while this boy was at school, the wind knocked down the antenna outside the house. The antenna hooked up to the television. Jan turned on the television to see if it would work and there was no picture. She knew the boy would be disappointed when he got home because he wouldn't be able to watch TV. And that afternoon, the boy returned and the woman explained to him what the problem was, that he wouldn't be able to watch the television. The boy walks over to the set, turns it on, then puts his hands on the television for a few moments. And Jan says, you know, there's going to be no picture. And the boy replied, oh yes, there will be. And a few moments later, that does it. And Jan asks, what does it? And the boy answers, my imagination. I just imagined it. It'll work. And he sits down in front of the TV and here comes this beautiful picture. <laughs> in that lecture, Neville goes on to say that Jan couldn't do it even though she knows this principle, but she's an adult now. We become so adulterated as we grow in this world. The little child could actually believe that that power in his hand was all his imagination. Jan was amazed, but the boy wasn't. The boy knew it would work. He had absolutely no doubt. Your true self is that same self that played in imagination as a child. You only believe that you've aged and that you have to be about adulting every day and that you no longer have time for the imagination. You might be thinking that that kind of freedom and faith as a child is really impossible now. You know, we're grown up. How do I get that kind of faith back, that kind of certainty, that kind of outright refusal to accept objective facts? Well, first, Stop assuming that <laughs> and play every day. I told that to a woman yesterday. I said, play. <laughs> and she said, right, Mike, I hear you. And I hear you say that all the time, but explain that better. What do you mean by that? Because I don't really have a lot of desires to play with. So let's say you've already imagined the fulfillment of your one, two, three, four big wishes. Everybody's got something, right? So you've done it. Let them be. Now, play. Not about those desires. Play with other things. Remember, you are all imagination. Everything around you is shaped by the state you're in, your state of mind, your imagination. So as you go to sleep at night, have some fun with it. Put something, a request to your higher self. Sometimes I like to say, let's do something fun tonight as I drift off to sleep, knowing that I will have some fun while my body is asleep. And I do. I have some fascinating dreams, some adventures. And before you get out of bed, while you're still in that half asleep state, decide right there that the day before you is going to be surprisingly good and feel the satisfaction of how good that day is. And while you're in bed still, imagine the day is done and you're actually in bed for the night and you're thinking back on the day amazed at how wonderful it was. 
Now, a warning there, I've done that, or there have been a few times when I've done that, lying in bed, imagining it's the end of day and I'm drifting off to sleep. And I have actually drifted off to sleep. <laughs> and play with scenes. Imagine having a conversation with someone, not to get anything necessarily, just to practice moving in imagination. I love to do that. I will bring up someone in my mind and I see their smiling face and I tell them hello. And I see them smile back at me. And within a short time, every time I see that person or I'll hear from that person, they'll text me or reach out to me on social media. And it's never been longer than a day from when I see them in imagination until I see them or hear from them in this physical world. And I don't do it for any real purpose necessarily, just to have fun with it. And when I'm tired of the warm weather, I imagine hearing the weatherman talk about a cool front. And within a few days, I'll overhear the weather report mentioning cooler temperatures. Even now, we're in, in springtime and the weatherman keeps mentioning, here's another cool front, here's a cool front. And I joke with Kim, every time I hear that, I'll say, and you're welcome. <laughs> And sit down in a place in your house and imagine you're somewhere else in your house. And while you're in that spot in imagination, think about that place where your body was a moment ago. Feel the distance and the different feeling you're having in this other, this other place in your house. Now, that's not my idea. Neville did it at his, as his practice. He practiced that way. His teacher, Abdullah, told him to do that, to, as Neville said, get loose, as it were. <laughs> now, all of these are just suggestions based on what I do and what I've done over the last few years. You come up with your own ways to play, to practice the art of imagining. And when you notice yourself thinking, oh, well, this certain thing would be impossible. Mm, take that as a challenge from yourself. Like the queen says in Alice in Wonderland, I believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. <laughs> I can't tell you how to have fun with this. My fun is probably not your fun. And it's up to you. But I do know that if you can't find the fun in this, it's all going to become very tiresome and difficult. And you'll eventually give up on it. Until you've really had enough of the way things are. Hey, I want to hear from you. I love getting your stories and I've gotten a lot lately and I have a bunch in the queue to share with you out there. Some really cool stories from listeners. So share with me your stories. You can reach me at feelingtwisty at gmail.com or just find Feeling Twisty on Instagram or Facebook. I love you. I'm Feeling Twisty.